Hey guys, this is MacHeads101, and today I'm going to be talking about how we manipulate a single qubit in QCL. Now, a qubit is um, the quantum version of a regular bit in a real computer. So in your, in your computer, in your classical computer, um, it stores data with a single bit at a time. So a bit on your computer is either a 1 or a 0, and it definitely has a value of a 1 or a value of a 0. Now when we measure a qubit off of, a, uh, off of the output of a quantum program, we'll either measure a value of 0 or 1. So in that sense, it's actually identical to how a regular bit works. However, while the quantum program is running, the qubit has extra properties. It has a probability of being measured as a 0 and a probability of being measured as a 1, and it also has something called a phase, which uh, we're going to be talking about probably in the next video, but we won't get that far into it in this video. But what I'm going to be showing you is how we can use QCL to manipulate a single qubit and to uh, basically explore the differences between a regular qubit and a, a bit on a computer. So let's go ahead and fire up QCL. And our first step is to, to declare a qubit that we can actually manipulate and change around. And this might seem weird to you who are familiar with other programming languages because in a language like C or Java, you might declare an integer and an integer is actually 32 bits. Um, well, here we're declaring one qubit, and the reason we're not declaring a big data type like an integer is that um, in order for a regular computer to represent 32 qubits, it would take four gigabytes of RAM to do. So uh, what we actually need to do is declare a single qubit at a time, so that way we save memory um, a great deal, whereas in a real program on a regular computer, or as I anticipate it'll be like on a quantum computer, you won't be that worried about single bits uh, taking up storage. Um, but in this case, we will worry about it because we're not on a quantum computer. So we're going to declare um, something called the quantum register, and we'll give it a size of 1. Now, a quantum register is designed to hold multiple qubits if we want. It's like an array of qubits. Uh, but in this case, we're going to be declaring uh, just one, one um, qubit in the quantum register. So the data type for quantum register is QUREG. So to declare a quantum register, we just have QUREG space, the variable name, which is the name we'll be referencing. Well, we're basically giving our qubit a name. I'll call it x. And I'll put the number of qubits we want to allocate in brackets. In that case, it's 1. And we'll hit Enter. And if I type dump right now, it says 1 out of 64 qubits allocated, which means we now have one qubit to work with. And underneath this little thing that's printed out, we see that it says one and then this zero here. Now what is that actually telling us? Well, this thing where it's a, you know, a vertical line, then a zero, and then a close, you know, um, I guess that's a greater than symbol, but I just think of it as like a closed kind of bracket, is this is our actual state. So this is, for instance, the zero state. And there's a difference between a state and its coefficient. We could call this no, or down, or off, or something like that, we just choose to call it zero because we're thinking about it like a regular bit. Um, but it's actually, it's actually not a number at all. Don't think of it like a number. It's just a name that we're assigning to our, to our off state. Now, this number here that's not in any kind of you know, fancy decoration, um, this right here is our coefficient, this one. So the coefficient of the zero state is one. And in this case, um, but not in every case, I'll show you why in a moment, in this case we'll think of 1 as the probability of measuring the zero state. Um, now, we're saying 1 instead of 100% because when you're working with actual numbers it makes more sense to go from 0 to 1 than to go from 0 to 100. Um, just because if you multiply two probabilities you'll actually get the probability of the other outcome. And it's just so much more nice to go from 0 to 1 than to go from you know 0 to 100. So don't forget about percentages in this video. We're just going to be dealing with probabilities from 0 to 1, where 1 is 100% and 0 is 0%. So in this case, our, our state is, it starts out as 100% chance, one chance, that we'll measure 0. Uh, now, what if I want to change it to um, being a complete chance that we'll measure a 1 instead of a 0? All we have to do is use the not function. And what the not function actually will do is it'll swap the coefficients between the zero state and the one state. So right now, because there's no chance we'll measure a one, the one state actually has a coefficient of zero, and that's why QCL isn't showing it in this list, because it doesn't show things that aren't going to happen. 
Um, but it's still there, it just has a probability of zero. So we're gonna swap the coefficient between the one state um, with this coefficient here. So now zero will have no probability and one will have a complete uh, probability of happening. So I'm gonna type not with the capital N and then this is a function that we're calling so we pass it X in parentheses like this. And now I'll hit enter and you'll see it prints out the state here and we can actually just type dump again if that makes you more comfortable but now you see the one coefficient has moved to the one state and it's not showing us the zero state now because it has a coefficient of zero. And I'm gonna not x one more time to get it back um, to having a full probability of being a zero. Now the next function I'm gonna show you actually will be the first function we're gonna see that will mix the state of a qubit. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna set the probability of zero to be a half and the probability of one to be a half. And it's not gonna show us what you might expect, and I'll show you why, and I'll show you right now. So to call this function, it's called the Hadamard function. Um, we just use a capital H as the function name, probably because no one wants to type out Hadamard every time. I know I don't, but I'm calling the Hadamard function on, the, on x. And to do this, I have x set to zero. And as we can see, the Hadamard function, when applied to zero, as we've just done, returns 0.70711 and then it goes on times 0 plus 0.707 blah 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 times 1 and you can already see these two are equal so the odds are probably equal that we're going to measure a 0 or a 1 but why isn't this 0.5 and you know or a half or whatever why is it this weird number and what it actually turns out is you have to think of a qubit kind of as uh, a line on a unit circle and if you're not familiar with trigonometry at all um, I won't bother you with this, but essentially it means that when we add the square of each state together, we're going to get a length of one. Um, but not when we add each, um, each coefficient um, together. And the reason why this is, is just um, like a qubit, you might want to think of it for now as a particle on a unit circle that's moving around. And for instance, the x-axis is the zero state and the y-axis is the one state. You know, the x-value and the y-value might not add up to one, but when you use the Pythagorean theorem, um, you add up the squares of the two, you'll always get the radius, and we just define the radius of our qubit to be one. Um, but if you don't, if you don't want to think about it geometrically, just know that when you square the coefficient of a given state, that'll be the probability. So just to verify when I square this, it is actually 0.5. So um, what this tells us is this tells us this is the one over the square root of two, because when you square it, you get one over two. So um, that's just, how the math works behind it. And if I show you one over the square root of two is in fact the number there. Although the number here is rounded, the number here isn't. So that's actually one over the square root of two. Um, but now I'll go ahead and I'll take the Hadamard of this junk and we'll just see what we get. And I haven't already showed you how to, how to evaluate a quantum function, for instance, on, on a mixed state, but I'll show you how we do that in a second. So if I take the Hadamard of x, you probably have no idea what to, what to expect. Um, but if I hit enter, you see what just happened, it's back at um, a zero state. So here I took the Hadamard of, of, um, of zero and it gave me this junk and I took the Hadamard of the junk and it gave me back zero. So what it turns out is Hadamard is its own inverse. But um, first I'm gonna show you how we figure that out and then I'll show you why. So let's say I take the not function of x. Now x will have a value of one instead of zero. And right here we took the Hadamard of, of zero. What happens when we take the Hadamard of one? Well, let's see. It, it has the same probabilities because if we square this, we get 0.5. And if we square this, even though it's negative, we still get 0.5. But the difference is the one coefficient is actually negative. So what's going on there? Well, it turns out the Hadamard function, when you apply it to a one, it actually will be different than the Hadamard function of zero in that the coefficient for one is actually negative and not positive. And um, so we can actually use this information to figure out what the Hadamard is of any mixed state at all. And to do this, for instance, let's say I wanted to take the Hadamard of this junk up here and figure out that it would always give me a zero. Um, I'm, first, I'm going to reset x back to be one. I'm going to write up a little proof right now to show you how we take the Hadamard of any mixed state. So I'm going to open up text edit. And I'm going to quickly create a program or a project, and not even none of those things. I'm going to quickly create a text document. So here's our text document. 
and I'm going to write down what we already know. So h of 1 times our 0 state will yield us, what was it? It was this. And h of 1 times our 1 state will yield us this right here, which is the same thing except the coefficient is negative. Now, this number right here, 0 0.707 blah blah blah, is actually just um, the square root of 1 half. So I'm going to write, let's call it um, s equals the square root of 1 half. And now that we know, um, now that we have this variable, I'm just going to replace all the 0.707s with s to make our lives easier and cleaner. And I'm going to also just note that s squared equals 1 half. So here we go. We have our Hadamard of 0 and our Hadamard of 1. Let's try to figure out what this value is when we take the Hadamard of it. So the Hadamard of any mixed state, and I'll just write down s, s here. The Hadamard of any mixed state will actually be the Hadamard of this portion plus the Hadamard of this portion. And it works that way with any uh, quantum operator. So I'm going to go ahead and type this out right here. It's s times the Hadamard of 0 plus s times the Hadamard of 1. So already we know that we're just going to take the Hadamard of 0 and take the Hadamard of 1 and you know multiply them by s, which is our 1 over, you know, the square root of 2, and add them together. And now our next step will be, I'm going to write this out pretty quickly, s times, and then I'm going to paste in the Hadamard of 0 here, which we know is this, plus s times the Hadamard of 1, which is that, except this is negative. And our next step will be distributing the s's here. So remember, s times s is 1 half and s times s is 1 half. So it's going to be 1 half times 0 plus 1 half times 1 plus, and now I'm going to do this side right here, 1 half times 0 plus, or minus 1 half times 1. And yeah, that minus is important. I don't want to forget that. So if we add the like terms here, and you can just treat 0 like a variable. So these are like terms, and this is a like term with this. So I'm going to put these in bold, because they actually cancel out, and you'll see why. It's positive 1 half, um, and then negative 1 half there. So the 1 coefficient becomes 0, and meanwhile, the 1 halves, and I'm going to take this out of bold, the 1 halves of 0 are both positive, so that becomes 1. So it's going to be 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1. And that's why the Hadamard of this stuff actually comes out to be um, 0. And now I'll just, I could show you the same thing for 1, but I think you know how to evaluate it for 1. Um, you know, you would just change this to a minus, change the minus there, add a minus there, blah, 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 and you'll see it comes out to be completely 1 and completely not 0. So the idea is, that when you take the Hadamard um, and then you take it again, it'll be its own inverse. Now what happens if we take the Hadamard of a state and then we apply some other thing to it and then we take the Hadamard again? Well, this will be the basis of our next video um, when it comes to rotation, but I'm going to really quickly, quickly show you what happens if I um, take the Hadamard of 1 right here. X is already 1 in this program. Um, and I'm going to not this state. And as we remember, knotting will just swap the coefficients, so the minus will move to 0 from 1. So as you can see, it moved from, from, um, from 1 to 0. And now we can figure out what the Hadamard of this is, and let's just do it and hope we don't make a math mistake before we take the Hadamard in this actual thing, just to see if we can predict what we'll get. So the Hadamard of, what's this state right here? Well, it's this. And we'll change this to s because that's easier to deal with. Uh, well, that'll be minus s times the Hadamard of 0. And I'm just going to write this right down here. It's going to be minus s times this plus 
S times, and then this. And now we can go ahead and um, distribute this. So it's going to be minus 0, minus 1. So minus 1 half times 0, minus 1 half times 1. And then plus 1 half times 0, minus 1 half times 1. Correct? And now what you'll see is these minuses are constructive because they're both negative, so, but then the zeros cancel out because it's minus one half here and plus one half here. So it's going to be zero times our zero state but minus one times our one state. And um, let's go ahead and actually run this now. And you can see it's minus one times our one state. So we actually did calculate correctly what the Hadamard would be if we took the Hadamard of this of this value. And of course we don't need to use S here. It could be any random mixed state um, and we could take the Hadamard of it using this same uh, kind of formulation. Um, and so that I think that's really cool and it's neat that it works. And all you actually need to know for a single qubit operation, all you need to know to calculate it for any value is you need to know what happens if you do that operation on a 0 and if you do that operation on a 1. And if you know that, you can calculate any, any uh, value of that function. And that's called the basis of the function. It's what it does to 0 and it's what it does to 1. And we're going to be thinking about bases a lot um, when it gets further down the line. And that's a linear algebra concept um, that you'll get familiar with even if you don't know linear algebra throughout these tutorials. Um, so. This was uh, quite a bit of math, I think, for a programming video, but I think it was necessary and I think it's cool to see. And one last thing I'll note is, um, what would be the probability of measuring a 1 in this scenario? Well, it's the square of this coefficient, so it's a 1. So we're completely likely to measure a 1 in this scenario. Um, so when our quantum program is finished, there's no difference between measuring a minus 1 of the 1 state and a positive 1 of the 1 state. Um, because, well, you know, the odds are the same. Uh, it's just the phase that's different. And so just keep that in mind um, and think about that maybe a little bit because in our next video we're going to be talking completely about phase and we're going to be doing changes that won't be observable, but then suddenly when we do some other change, um, the non-observable change will become observable. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe and goodbye.